are actually, uh, uh -oh, I see connecting to the server. Um, we, uh, uh, I own an e-commerce only agency. We focus on building them, technology stack planning, uh, some conversion optimization, although I don't do anymore. I don't do the level of testing that, that AJ's company does because I don't have the time or the expertise in-house. And we do email marketing, SEO, and bot marketing with um, actually Brian Smith helps us out with that. And he's here from, from Maisie. And I apologize for the dog noise in the background. So uh, we have a new one so that there's a that sounds like a dust up, but it'll be okay. Anyway, um, so that's me. I've been doing this forever. Um, I'm <laughs> sorry, distracted by the ones running behind me. Brian, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Brian Smith. I'm here today representing Maisie. Uh, Maisie is a conversational um, chat bot. It's kind of hard to describe. I'll, I'll get into it a little bit later on. But I've, I also am a store owner. I've been on big commerce for about I don't know, six or seven years now. I've been running an e-commerce store for like 19 years. I've been a customer. I'm actually a customer of Just Uno even now. So I'm going to talk about what, what Maisie does also. Cool. Scott? Ryan, appreciate the shout out. Uh, my name is Scott Richards. I work at Just Uno. I help with the agency partnerships. And our tool uh, is you know, a pretty e-commerce agnostic tool to help merchants and digital marketers with, you know, creating funnels for their uh, ESPs. Uh, we also introduce A-B testing for CRO services, and we work really hard to help merchants and digital agencies get the best return on ad spend uh, with on-site messaging and being able to really understand those behaviors and, and target those behaviors again. Isaac. Uh, hi, uh, first time here. Uh, I'm actually in Denver. Uh, by that, I've joined because I'm interested in this group. Um, but yeah, I'm a product designer with a background in sales and marketing. Um, I have run eBay and uh, uh, Amazon stores and um, have a little bit of experience, but I just want to get into the scene more and kind of dabble in that again because I do have clients that are actually in e-commerce and I want to see how I can help them better. Cool. Steve, I know you're going silent. Do you want to speak up? You're still muted. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Lori. Um, you're asking about getting out and about. I'm, I'm finally in my co-working space again after over a year. Um, hey. I run a Google Ads agency, so I help customers, um, both service companies and e-com stores with uh, paid marketing on Google Ads. Cool. Glad to be do here. Do you do just Google ads? Do you do Bing? Yeah, and, I, I have a Facebook? couple accounts where I help folks that have Bing, but they almost always have a larger Google ads presence. And I, I sort of bring that under the umbrella, but I've, I'm much more focused almost entirely on Google ads. Google. Cool. Thank Michael. you. You're still muted, Michael. Hey gang, so my name is Mike. Hi. I own a company called Micro Puzzles. Uh, we have a four by six puzzles that we actually like they're jigsaw puzzles that we pop into uh, test tubes. So we started the company um, in 2018. Uh, we had a huge push in April. Uh, we, we did it out of our apartment uh, and we just moved to a uh, 2,500 square foot uh, facility in Anaheim now doing full production and everything. So we've been actually um, a little bit of survivor's guilt but we've had a, an amazing year. <laughs> um, I bet. <laughs> yeah, we've been super excited. So, but the, well, our, our core product actually, our, our, uh, our core product is, uh, is a little tiny micro puzzle uh, that we make and we print and make in USA. Very cool. I bet it was a great year for, for puzzles. <laughs> e. Aaron. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Hi, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Aaron is great. So, uh, my name is Aaron Ark. I'm located in Palo Alto, California, uh, in the Silicon Valley. And we are focused on the retail technologies to measure conversion rates in brick and mortar stores. Actually, we have small chips goes on to demo display products to, to measure customer behavior. 
uh, and measure conversion rates, uh, the interaction per and um, at sales. So uh, we also create in-store customer experience when uh, the customers touch the product uh, in the demo display in its in the store. So uh, we connect uh, the digital content with physical products in the stores with our small patented chips. So uh, thank you for having me, uh, and I appreciate to to listening to you guys in Austin. Maybe sometime I plan to come to Austin to meet you guys. Cool. Yeah, we'd love to meet you. Maxwell, you're on. Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Perfect. So my name is Maxwell Varlak. I am a software engineer here in Austin. And the reason why I'm here is to learn about how different tools are used in the e-commerce space. So yeah, it's a pleasure to be with all of you today. Awesome. JL. Uh, she put in the chat that she's having uh, audio issues. So she, uh, okay. I think she chatted her, uh, her bio. Yes. In the chat. She said she's the founder of Body Doubler, a MarTech uh, consumer SaaS. So uh, we'd love to know more about that too. Maybe her system will improve. Uh, Robin. Hey, hey guys. Hey, Laurie. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Um, nice to see yeah, you again, Robin. There's some issue with my webcam, so uh, I can't show up. I'm still finding some profile pic for it. But uh, <laughs> hey, guys, uh, I'm Robin. Uh, I'm from um, uh, Malaysia. Um, so it's right around 1 a.m. right here. Uh, we run a company uh, in Hong Kong that provides uh, astronomical equipment, um, such as telescopes, uh, specialized um, astronomy cameras for taking pictures of the night skies. So we've been running on big commerce uh, since uh, 2014. So yeah, we are here to like know, learn more about from uh, experts like you guys. And yeah, good to be here and uh, wish everybody uh, in a healthy state. Yeah. Yes, please. Everybody stay healthy. Harold. Yeah. Yes. Um, so uh, I'm new to this, uh, to this meetup and uh, trying to understand what you guys are doing. Uh, I run a startup. Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur. This is my fifth startup. And uh, we are working on technology, AI-related technology that helps online and offline retailers um, um, improve their, uh, optimize their uh, operations and uh, business intelligence. Okay, cool. Um, Chris, the plant man. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, Chris. My name is Chris Link. Um, I run a, an online website, uh, plantaddicts.com. We sell plants online um, in the United States. So just to the 48 states, sorry, Hawaii and Alaska, but uh, here just to learn about any new tools that could help us increase conversions and make our website a better experience. We, uh, we critiqued Chris's site uh, in, in the Ecom Convert a couple of weeks ago. So if anybody would like to see that video, um, I could point you to where it is. Uh, and their site's actually already really nice, you know, but like most store owners, he's constantly seeking ways to, to do more with it. So yep. anyway, yeah, and here comes the always welcome. And Let's see, we've got a new gal. We've got several people joining us here. Ah, Julie is back. Sh Sherry, I don't know if you can hear us yet. I think they're still working on it. Um, anyway, I guess we can, oh good. Did you wanna introduce yourself, Sherry? And what you do and, and tell us a little bit about your company? She's still muted. Okay, I'm guessing technical issues. Um, huh, I wonder if Zoom is on the walk today. All right, uh, well, let's get into our presentation. 
we're gonna today we're talking about some popular tools or or maybe actually maybe tools you didn't completely understand or don't really know about yet that you can use to to help grow your sales and um, I guess Brian you want to start off telling everybody more about Maisie sure um, Maisie is kind of hard to, to describe I could actually show it to you if I could share my screen is that okay yeah okay and how long do how long do you want me to take five minutes maybe all 10. right let's see. let me get the right window up here hold on one second i wasn't prepared <laughs> do you want me to pick on scott first yeah why don't you do that come back to me please thank you all right scott go for it thank you i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen can everybody see yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, since, since 2013, I've been helping e-commerce merchants and agencies uh, solve conversion and, you know, sales problems for the e-commerce stores. Uh, I originally started my career at Big Commerce as an AE, moved over to Just Juno in, into a partnership role. And I've been familiar with Lori and, the, and AJ and this meetup group for a while. So I appreciate everybody uh, joining today and, and for Lori and AJ for putting this together. Uh, so let's jump into uh, just, you know, uh, who we are and some uh, uh, kind of 30,000 foot view of what we do here. Uh, so we were founded in 2010. We just brought on our 60th employee. Uh, we're currently installed in 188,000 brands. Uh, I would say that 98% of those brands are e-commerce. I'd say the lion's shares of those brands are on Shopify, followed by Big Commerce, then Magento 2 and uh, WooCommerce. Uh, we had offices in San Francisco where we were founded in Austin, where I am located. Obviously, with COVID, that's kind of changed things up. So we're either in California or Texas, which is, I, I bet, a lot of teams are, are also doing the same thing. Uh, we're also privately held, uh, bootstrapped, and uh, profitable. Uh, so what is Just Do Know? Uh, Just Do Know is an AI visitor conversion platform that utilizes billions of user data points to provide intelligent lead captures, personalized website messaging, and actionable insights that help e-commerce merchants turn website clicks into customers. And then what I'm going to share right here is kind of our five value propositions or pillars uh, in how we help our merchants and how we help our agency partners. Uh, number one, by increasing and segmenting your lead captures to build more targeted lists for your ESP. Uh, this will help with personalization. This will also help with uh, building profiles and then also targeting those profiles. Uh, we also help digital agencies as well as internal uh, marketing teams with re reinforcing your existing marketing activities uh, through targeted messaging and on-site optimization. Uh, so if you're working with somebody like Steve and he's running your Google ads, you know, we can make sure that when somebody clicks through that Google ad, when they come onto the website, that message is mirrored. This is going to help increase those conversions and at least move somebody further into the funnel of giving you an email or completing the purchase. Uh, our tool is also very sophisticated where we can really target your ad spend. So this kind of bleeds into Google ads or Bing or organic or, you know, sending traffic back to the website from email. We can help you increase your return on ad spend by converting more of that traffic via paid advertising channels. Um, so you can really segment those audiences that are coming from paid social, that are clicking through through PPC, that are, you know, manually entering in your web address uh, to, to get onto the site, or we can also target folks that are coming back to the website from your ESP and making sure that that message is again reinforced. Uh, and then probably the easiest and low hanging fruit tool that we bring to the table is identifying uh, site abandoners and targeting exit intent behaviors. Um, this is a great strategy, not only to obviously increase conversions on the site, but you can also leverage that to reduce bounce rates from your paid ads. Um, and what's really cool is you can A-B test those uh, messages when those folks come to the website, really optimize the experience, let the data tell you what's winning, what's not winning, and then making those adjustments. Um, so that's the low hanging fruit uh, tool that we bring to the table. And then finally in 2019, uh, we introduced a new tool called Commerce AI. And this allows our, uh, our merchants to be able to upsell, cross-sell, uh, you know, products, uh, you know, at checkout, depending on which platform you're on, 
um, but really help you lift AOV and start to introduce other creative ways to increase conversions or increase your list building with like a free gift with purchase or a complete the set, forced include some products or, you know, forced include best sellers uh, based on what is in the card already. Um, so that's the, a 30,000 foot view of the Just Do Know tool. So we really like to help our merchants. We really like to help our digital partners and make sure that you guys are getting the best return on investment. Thank you. Was that five minutes? I don't know, close enough. <laughs> Brian, let's talk about the bots. <laughs> here we go, let me share my screen here. Scott, you gotta give up the screen. There it is, stop, sorry, the stop sharing disappeared, there we go. All right, I gotta find the right window. Where's, oh, there it is, Why is it way over there. All right, can you see my screen? Yeah. All right, so what Maisie is, um, it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of hard to describe. Think of it kind of a, a cross between like a live chat and a, a Just Do Know, if you're familiar with Just Do Know. Um, I, I still am a Just Do Know customer, as I was saying earlier. I was using live chat before. The thing is for a small vendor, I didn't have the time to, to man live chat. I don't have the staff to man it. Even if you are manning it, say you're manning it 40 hours a week, there's still 128 hours a week, people aren't there. So what Maisie does is it greets the customers that come to the website, kind of like a chat would, but it was what we call a structured conversation. So rather than being a live person in the back end, and you absolutely can have live people in the back end, but the first thing we want to do is present to people like FAQs. What are the questions people are asking most of the time? So people want to know, how do I find a product? Or they want to know, where's my order? Or they want to know if they can get a discount? Or do you have a rewards program? So those kind of questions you can actually kind of program into Maisie by creating these conversational flows, which are structured. So the customer, instead of typing, it's not an AI where we're trying to figure out what they're saying. Um, because a lot of times customers, for example, on their cell phones, and they don't want to be typing. So they just choose, I want to get product ideas, for example. So we would start to ask them, how would you like to get those ideas? And you can make these, these quizzes, we call them as sophisticated or as simple as you like. And this is something that I, again, as a small merchant wanted to do for years, when I was running my Yahoo store and on big commerce, but to do it was too expensive to, to program it or find a, a right tool to do it. And when the guys from Maisie approached me, I was like, I can finally build this tool where I can walk the customer through and I can ask them, are you looking for skincare products or hair care products? Are you male? Are you female or whatever? And I can, I can actually get them down to the point where I can present a product to them, um, showing them the product that, that's, that's best for them. The other thing is customers, again, a lot of times are like, they place the order. Where's my order? So they're going to email you or they're going to call you. With a Maisie assistant, we can come up and we can ask them, and they can ask us where the order is, hopefully take care of that before they, um, before they have to call us or we have to get back to them. So with Maisie, you can ask, you can answer questions like, of course, like where's my product, any kind of FAQs, order tracking, you can use it for list building, uh, you can use it for uh, abandonment. So say someone's looking at a product and they decide they're going to leave the site, we can capture them before they leave the site and say, do you want to save your shopping cart? Or do you want to, um, or would you want to be notified if the price drops? So things like that. It's it's really pretty much anything you want to build. It's a platform that you can build on that is that kind of mimics live chat, but also gives you that you can you can customize this by by page, by the visitor, uh, et cetera. Kind of like you can with Just Duna, right? So when does the pop up appear and stuff like that? Um, the last thing I want to say is um, I don't show you like something I did on my site because I actually happen to be out of stock on an item right now. And before, like if I was out of stock, the customer would just, they would just kind of go away. So what we, what I did is I found a, let me find this here, sorry. So this is a product that happens to be out of sight, out of stock. And my, of course my system's really slow right now. Wow, this is really slow. What's going on? It's because you're presenting, so it's got to be Okay, so, so what it is, I <laughs> actually, um, I put this tool in here so that I can notify the customer, the customer can get notified when the product is available. And that's great, but I wanted to also explain to the customer the customized message 
you know, sorry, we're out of, we're out of stock. Here's when we think we're going to have it back. Just offer them a little apology, make it a little customized or uh, more personalized experience. So I just literally built this like a couple of days ago with Maisie to have this pop-up come up on this particular item while it's out of stock. So those are the, some of the things you can do with, with uh, Maisie. Uh, the website is maisieai.com if you want to find out more about it. Um, and that's it. Um, you know what, Sean forwarded to us, there's a deal that they're offering everybody who came here. Like, give me a second to find it. Okay. And um, I'll post it in the chat if AJ, you'd like to talk a little bit more about what you what you do. Yeah, happy to do that. Hey everybody, I'm AJ. Uh, so what I'm gonna be here representing today is the perspective of what tools are out there. We also have a tool, but it is something that's more useful once you are doing a lot of testing into, into conversion, conversion rate optimization. Um, I did wanna just share a short example of what is A-B testing? Like, what do we mean by that? What can we get from it? Because what's great is that there's all these tools out there that can, can help us improve the experience, but we really have to ask, is it really improving the experience? How much? Um, anytime we're making a design decision for our site, it could be distracting or it could be helping. So what we do is we help teams evaluate the tools, evaluate the designs. So here's a really simple example. You'd have your site, you'd have you know different design elements that are being shown to 50% of your traffic versus 50% would see something different. And then we measure the differences between the experience between those two different cohorts. And so we can confidently say this green button with the arrow is much better. It gets more sophisticated. I think the example we were just looking at is a great one. What do we do with out of stock items? What's gonna be the best experience for customers? Whether we're testing a chat box example, I love that one. Um, the notification, how do we show that notification? Which one is gonna get the most engagement? So A-B testing can really enable us to do all that. I got into this field by working on a product called Google Optimize. I'll drop the, this blog post into the chat for everybody. This is a great tool, it's a free tool by Google. I don't work there anymore, I'm not representing them today, uh, but this is a great way to get started in really split testing those experiences and making sure that you're putting the right design forward, the right technology forward to support your customer needs. And then once you've got a bunch of things on your list of what it is that you wanna test and experiment with, our tool Hypothesis Library is a great tool for collecting all of your team's ideas and making sure that you're managing and prioritizing the right ones. That's it. Thanks. Awesome. Cool. So now for some questions. Who's got questions for the panel here? Sam, you got any questions you want to ask about how you would use something or do something? I'm going to start putting people on the spot. <laughs> Scott, you also, I, I should mention while we're, we're talking about it, um, Just Uno actually has an amazing uh, free option for you to get started with them. Uh, up to 5,000 users. Um, uh, yeah. Per uh, month. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> a, I it's trip a, on my tongue. It's a, it's a very generous, um, you know, offer for e-commerce merchants that are maybe just getting started or maybe replatforming. Um, but this is a great way to help you, you know, instead of, you know, increasing your ad spend, you know, when you're getting online for the first time or moving to a new platform, really focus on your on-site messaging and the funnels that you're building. And that's where Just Uno can really help you out. And then as you start to ramp up your ad spend, you know, you have already optimized the messaging. And when people are coming to the website, you know, that conversion and that funnel is already in place. Um, so we do uh, offer a 14-day free trial as well. Um, I thought I put it in the chat, but it looked like it went directly to Sherry. So apologies, but um, <laughs> I'll share a link uh, that anybody that's interested in Just Uno can get signed up for our 14-day trial. And then anybody that uh, upgrades to a paid subscription because they're a part of this meetup with uh, Lori and AJ, they can get a 10% promotion off of the monthly subscription. So um, let me know if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer that or any uh, use cases that you'd like to discuss. It sounds like we've got a lot of thought leaders that can uh, really help you out. 
Yeah, it looks like Steve might have a question. Yeah, I do have a question. I'm thinking of, of one of my larger customers. They are uh, um, kind of a small regional manufacturer. Um, but what's interesting about them is they're a pretty high ticket price. I think their lowest price item is about eighteen hundred dollars, and their highest is about five thousand. Mm -hmm. um, and they're you know they're doing great. They they I think that last year's revenue was about four million, so they're a pretty good sized little small company. Um, but I, you know I wonder you know I do Google Ads for them, and um, part of our challenge is with with such a low volume. Um, sometimes it's hard to make statistically significant, uh, you know, conclusions about, about data and, um, and that, you know, that wraps back to what AJ was talking about with AB testing. So, um, I guess my question to you is, is there like an ideal, um, ticket price that, that, the, that you would see yeah, working that's a... with you guys or, or, you know, work well or not well in the, in the premium market? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the cool thing about Just Uno is we can help SMB new businesses that are just getting online for the first time, and we can help existing businesses that, you know, have you know a longer sales cycle because of the uh, the big ticket items. So really, what's important for those type of brands is that that relationship and that story and, you know, keeping those engagements top of mind. Um, so you have to be more targeted with that messaging uh, when folks come onto the website. So, you know, my advice to you would be that, yes, Just Uno could potentially be a, a, a great tool for their tech stack um, because we can really kind of paint that picture from ad spend to conversion on site. And what did that journey look like? and then help you replicate that journey. And now you're creating profiles, you're duplicating the wins, you're optimizing the wins. And I think that's gonna be really important, especially if it's you know, not a lot of traffic and a high ticket item. Yeah, I think I'm gonna reach out to you and let, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> Would love to do one it. Of, I mean, one of the things that, that's unique to Just Uno, and I think I had mentioned in the chat, this is my favorite, one of my favorite tools um, is that it does, it's not just a pop-up. <laughs> um, it's a pop-up that can be, they, they do have a very extensive, easy to use rules engine, but if you really get into some of these complex situations and you have a programmer handy, you can actually completely custom program the triggers that activate the pop-up. So you have a, a literally infinite flexibility to, to maintain the scent you know, you're running ads and, and, and one of the big things, especially for those of you who are newer to e-commerce when it comes to marketing is maintaining the scent. Um, if you see an ad years ago, this is a classic story. I saw a Macy's ad that said, you know, buy online, return your bathing suit in store. Well, women in bathing suits, you know, this is just not a great purchase. So the confidence of knowing I can walk into the store and return it for free and, and embarrass myself at home trying it on is quite appealing. So I clicked on the link. There was literally nothing on that site from where I landed to the entire shopping process to checkout that confirmed that, that, that I could return in store for free and they didn't get a sale. And I mean, that was just one example of where scent didn't follow and, and because, because it didn't, I lost confidence. Or if you have a coupon mentioned in an ad, one of the problems with doing that is those codes, you know, then they have to go back and click on the ad to remember the coupon. You might want to say, you know, don't forget, here's your coupon, just click on this pop-up and copy it into your checkout. So there's, there's all kinds of ways of doing this that are a lot more sophisticated than a lot of people know. And yet you've got this extremely affordable tool that, that works for any size merchant to create that kind of control. It's really pretty sweet. Yeah, and Steve, I think one of the, like the point that you made about data, um, this, a lot of the features that Just Uno has, we've, we've tested out and I think what's great about them and in general about if you don't have a lot of data, you need to take bigger, more obvious swings or bigger changes on the site. So if it's a very small distance a change, you're just changing a button color like that example, you need a lot of data to show whether it impacted something. But if it's a really big difference, we need a lot less data. So things that are global changes or on landing pages, places with a lot of traffic are gonna be a better bet for A-B testing for the client you mentioned. 
Um, the other tool we have in our tool belt besides A-B testing is what I would call usability research, where you get representative customers and you observe them using the site. It's a really good way to find those little like friction point or rub points that happen in the customer journey. You may not be able to say this is a 30% difference or a 1% difference to orders, but you can identify a list of pain points that you can be pretty confident from the qualitative data is going to help. It's just saying their checkout is because you can customize it's it's fairly complex we we know there's some friction in there <laughs> yeah are you using any qualitative tools to uh to locate that friction or to identify that friction not really i mean we've got a developer who helps um who helps with the with the design um if, you know and I, I don't personally get involved with that part too much but the we just basically do it by by gut feel. And since this is a tools talk, I'll throw out a couple of tools that you guys could consider for that. So um, usertesting.com is a great remote testing tool that you could do for understanding the usability that does require like an enterprise commitment. So there's other tools like trymyui.com and userbrain.net, which are great uh, kind of lower cost ways to get a participant. Uh, observe how they're using it, record their screen, hear their thoughts, like set up a script for having them go through a specific workflow. Uh, that's awesome. AJ, do you mind dropping those links? I, I've, I'm not familiar with those tools. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I'd be happy to. And, you know, the chatbot thing is kind of new, but I one of the, the things that's unique to Maisie, and, and Brian can expand on this again, is is really the, the ability to set up something, uh, you know, a product, really help somebody through the buying process when you can't be there. Um, and, 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 you know, we've seen some pretty amazing results. Uh, not to mention, I, I think younger, especially if you serve a younger audience, they, they like to self-serve. What, what would Brian expand on that, please. Yeah, definitely, Laurie. Um, the thing is, you're right. Some people they were they like they want to self serve, and um, so there is, you know, it, it look it looks like live chat, but it's as I said, we have live chat. We just put that in the back end. But the thing that appealed to me as a small merchant was I did, you know, I don't, I'm not there to man the live chat. So it mimics that, and it gives the customer that experience, that interactive experience. Um, without having to interact with an actual person, and so it, it saves you as a merchant on the cost. Um, so we find that it's really helpful for, you know, for all those types of things to, for the customer to kind of feel like that, almost that brick and mortar experience, like when they walk into a store and we say, hi, how can I help you? And we give them a list of things to choose from. And as I was showing you in our demo store and on my store, it's, it's completely customizable. So you know the questions your customers are going to ask you most often, you know, the questions you're getting. So it can really filter you know, a lot of those, a lot of those things out. So they don't come to you. And that's been my experience using it on, on my store. Um, you know, people will say, I will, I don't know which shampoo to choose, which one, which is your best shampoo. So you, I, when they call me on the phone, they ask me, I'm like, well, what kind, are you looking for a natural shampoo? Or are you looking for something that's more like a salon shampoo? And what, you know, what price point are you looking at? And who's it for? All those questions, we ask them that in, in Maisie, and we just kind of narrow them down to a product. Um, the thing is, it's really nice. Also, I didn't get a chance to show this, but when they when they look at the product, they have a choice of either browsing the product, which takes them to the product page, adding it to their cart from right there, or actually adding it to their cart and going to the checkout page. So eliminating those steps. If they if if you recommend a product and they're like, okay, I'm good with this, they can add it right there and just check out right there. So it eliminates clicks. And a lot of merchants we talk to will say, well. I already have FAQ section. I already have all this in my shipping information. People don't look for that because it's usually in the footer of your website and they've got to scroll down. They've got to find it. We present that we move that information to where the customer is. So it's, it's and if they get those questions answered, there's a lot better chance they're going to buy. If they, if they want to know what's your return policy before they buy, we want to put that right up front so that they know. So that's, um, and the other thing I want to say, I, I'm a Just Uno um, customer. And I use Justuno for a lot of years. I still use Justuno. I hired Justuno's professional services because as Lori said, Justuno, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, the thing about Maisie, it, it's kind of a self-service tool. I, I built everything on my site myself. And that's what I like about it. And if I want to go pop in something really quick, like when I had that out of stock product the other day, 
I can just go in and create it for that product right there. And it's, it's really, really easy, easy to use. Um, so we've had, a, you know, the merchants that see it when they, once they get a look at it and understand what it is, because they'll say, well, I already have live chat. And we're like, well, we're not really live chat. I already have pop-ups. It's like, well, we're not really that. We're kind of like a combination of the two. Uh, Brian, let's see here, Sherry, and I'm not quite sure how to frame this, but she says a tool to filter like the experience of how can I help you for merchants? Yeah, that's, that's kind of how we start the conversation. How can I help you? And then we, we give them a list of things. I'm looking for a product or I'm, I want to know about your return policy or I want to know where my order is. So we, we, we anticipate. And then if they say if it's something else, then we, we keep trying to guess. And finally, as I said, if they get to the point where we can't answer the question. Um, we either give them a choice of sending you an email or sending something through Facebook Messenger, or we can, um, now we have live chat. So if you do have someone that happens to be available, they can actually chat. And we're talking to a lot of clients just saying, well, this can offload my live chats. I don't, I, I'm, I'm gonna keep live chat, but this, is, this can offload some of that. Or people would say, well, yeah, I have live chat, but I'm manning it from, you know, I, I, I work, I've talked to clients like, well, I'm there from nine to five. I'm like, yeah, but you're on the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast. So you're not there. At, when it's nine o'clock in the morning for, for me, it's six o'clock for you. You're not there for me. So even for people that do have live chat, Maisie can, can fill in those gaps the other 128 hours a week when you don't happen to be there. Uh, and so the customer, because there's nothing more frustrating than going to a site and say, oh yeah, we've got live chat and you click on it. There's nobody here. That's actually more frustrating than nobody being there. And I actually talked to one customer that what he does is when there's nobody there, they just turn their live chat off so people don't even know it's there. I'm like, well, wouldn't it be nice if you had Maisie there during that time when you're not there to answer those questions? So uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's it's and as I said, it's really easy to use. That's one of the and and it's priced really affordably. And from the customer perspective, I, I like 100% echo what you're saying, Brian. We've seen this in a lot of experiments that one of the hardest things to do is to focus customer attention. Like all they want is for you to take their hand and like hold them through the steps to conversion. Yeah. And so this, we find that chatbots are a great way to do that. But to your point, Brian, if you have that really clear, like call to action focal point on your site that is chat, you're going to get people clicking on it. And if nobody's there to answer, they're going to get frustrated and give up. So it is really important to have a game plan for what happens when people aren't there. Yeah. And some of the AI bots, uh, my experience has been, they're terrible. They never understand what you're talking about. So we don't even, we, we call them structured conversations. So we try to anticipate it and it's not, it's not perfect, of course, but you don't get that, you know, I'm asking this and it's answering something else. We, we, at least we know, it, we understand the question because we've, we've actually framed the question for the customer. The, uh... yeah, that, that's huge for, you know, if you're looking to expand international too, because again, time zones and being able to have accessibility and, you know, set the expectations properly for that visitor is key. So that that's a pretty awesome tool. Yeah. And what what kind do you have any numbers on what percentage of the, the typical chat conversation or something that's really easy to offload on a bot like where's my order? Yeah, I don't I don't have those numbers. Sean probably would. So I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have those. But um, yeah, it's just everybody gets that everybody gets tons of where's where's my order. And yeah. again, you, you probably have it somewhere on your site and they could go find it. But the thing is, Maisie moves it right up there to, to where they can see it because we come up and we ask them, you know, what are you looking for? Where's my order? Um, so it's I, I look at it as a way to move everything that you've already got. You know, I, I talk to people. I'm like, you don't really have to create this data. All you have to do is link to it. So you've already got your FAQs. You've already got your, your shipping pay, you know, page with your shipping policies. You've already got where's my order, you know, somewhere if you're using big commerce. We're just presenting it in a way that's more interactive for the customer. And it keeps you from answering the phone, running from the warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> to answer, answer a live chat or a phone call that's only, I ordered it last night, where is it? <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. And you get those. And and it's really great, you know, I, I would say for the small to mid-sized merchants, for the, for the people I already have full built out help desks, you know, um, it's, it, it may not be the right tool for them, but for people that are like small to mid-sized mid -size merchants. Now, I did talk to one customer and they said, well, we man our chat 24 seven. I'm like, really? I said, yeah, we're doing it with an offshore company. I said, well, that's probably fairly expensive. They said, oh yeah, it's equivalent of a full-time employee. 
And I'm like, we could do Maisie for a whole lot less money than that. And we could be there 24 seven, at least to answer those 80% of the questions. Which brings up a great question. Do you guys want to tell everybody where your starting point is for your tools price wise? We talk uh, about affordable, but we haven't put numbers on it. Maisie starts at, well, they're going to raise us at some point, but Maisie starts at $9 a month. So it's, it's, it's crazy affordable. That's I, I very paying, easy to, to palette. <laughs> yeah. I'm paying on my store about 40 bucks a month and I have about 20,000 visitors a month. Um, it's, it's very, very affordable. It's, other thing is it's really easy to turn on and off. So literally there's a switch, you turn it on, you turn it off. It's, it's just a script. So, you know, it's really easy to try out. It's, it's, it's very, very low risk to just give it a shot and see whether you like it or not. Scott? Uh, yeah, so we kind of went over the free plan that Justuna has available for you um, with less than 500 in monthly or 5,000 in monthly traffic sessions. Um, so our pricing is strictly built based on uh, your monthly sessions. Uh, it starts at $29 per month, so relatively inexpensive. Um, we can manage SMB, we can manage mid-market, we can manage enterprise. Uh, but yeah, it starts at $29, uh, $29 per month, no contract, month to month. And it's a one-click app. So if you're already on big commerce, you just go into the app store, you search for Just Uno, you create the account, and you're off to the races. Um, that installs everything. You don't have to get a developer to give you a hand with this. Uh, so yeah. Cool. AJ, I realize you, your services are more personalized and really aimed towards a little bit bigger store, but you have some uh, idea. I, 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 maybe I could speak to some of the tools we've mentioned too. So, you know, some <laughs> of the tools I encourage you to take a look at in addition to these ones that are providing specific functionality would be Google Optimize would be the best like entry level A-B testing platform out there. You can do up to five tests simultaneously which will cover your homepage, you know, your category page, PDP, product page, cart and checkout. So it's a really good starting place for anyone doing testing. Um, and it connects automatically with analytics. So you can build off of all the data you're already collecting. Um, Hotjar has a pretty good pricing model to start doing some click tracking. Microsoft Clarity is new to the scene for being able to capture session level data. And what's really cool about these click tracking tools is you get a chance to like see people using your site and kind of detract, um, de uh, notice when they're having like click events, like I'm really frustrated and clicking or I'm going back a bunch of times. These tools will, will surface some of those so you can start identifying pain points. Um, and then I dropped some of the uh, research tools in the chat. They're quite variable in pricing. Some of them require like a, a, an annual fee and commitment and some of them are pay per session. You can expect to pay about, 30 to $50 per participant for an hour usability session. Uh, and I would recommend uh, working with, you know, an expert to structure that. So you get the most meaningful data from those sessions, which aren't super cheap, but they're very valuable. They bring a lot of insights. Well, the rest of you have been a little bit quiet. Now's your chance to ask other questions. Somebody, Aaron, you got any more questions? Yeah, I would like to ask uh, that. So as I mentioned, we are focused on the brick and mortar stores, the physical locations, the measure media success and store success uh, while doing that A-B testing. So AG, um, uh, I'm not pretty sure about the, the online A-B testing versus the in-store A-B testing, but if you have something in your mind, please share about uh, not only the e-commerce, but also uh, the brick and mortar A-B testing on a product and product location, the product, you know, um, interaction, because we measure interactions. We have small chips, as I mentioned, goes on to demo display product. For example, at IKEA, when you go to the refrigerator, when you open the refrigerator door, so our system knows that a thousand people open this refrigerator in that location versus the other location uh, or other uh, the refrigerator or uh, the different type of the, the refrigerator. And you can imagine Calvin Klein using it uh, with the different uh, the products. And um, so please help me about that. Yeah, I think, I think that you, it sounds like you have the hardest part covered, which is collecting the in-store interaction interaction data. 
Uh, for those stores who that's not feasible, usability studies, um, the idea of observing people in your store and interviewing them in context can be really helpful to understand things. But if you really do have that data, then you just need a really well structured research plan. So you need to define what is the variable that's changing? How are you gonna make sure that the two groups having different experiences are similar to each other so that you're really measuring the change in location versus population or seasonal or time-based differences. Um, and you wanna make sure the change is big enough you can see it with your sample. So we can go, I'm happy to take that offline and go much deeper on that topic with you. But since you've got the data, you, you can design experiments in store and start learning about what works best. Awesome, thanks so much to keep in touch. Sherry, do you have a question? I've been seeing you typing away. <laughs> Robin? Isaac? Yeah, I have a, I have a question for Brian uh, regarding the, uh, uh, the, the AI chatbots. Um, because uh, um, I think it's more like a uh, because we have like about like 1,000 skills and uh, it will involve a lot of um, specialized knowledge into each different products. So how, how, how in, in that kind of scenario would it be? Um, because I assume that the AI chatbot doesn't really like run through your past um, uh, live chats or your emails uh, correspondence with your clients in the past to learn about the the to, to get a, to generate a database in that sense. Um, like how, how, how feasible is it, uh, you know, to, to create those kind of structures responses uh, to, to, to feed the air bots uh, enough knowledge such that it would be able to like, you know, uh, respond to your clients without you being on the spot? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's not really AI at this point, at least it's not artificial intelligence. It's really you putting your, your knowledge into it. Um, for people like me, a small store, the couple hundred items, it wasn't, it's not that difficult to build. If you've got thousands of items, you might have to just structure it differently. So it's kind of, think of it almost like your, your menus on your site right now, you probably got categories of products. So yeah. you're going to basically present those types of questions to customers. What type of product are you looking for? And then you just break it down from there to there. You may, if you've got thousands of items, maybe you don't take it all the way down to a product level. You just take it down to a category page. So you say, mm -hmm. well, based upon what you've told me, here are the products you want to choose from. And it might just be a category of products rather than all the way down to that very granular level. The great mm -hmm. thing is, is you can start at any level you want and always make it more sophisticated la later. So the, the product finder or the product quiz, as we call it, is something you don't have to do right away. It's something you could do at, at a later point. And depending on how many items you have, you might have to think about how am I going to design this? So it's feasible for me to do it with as many items as I have, or if your if your catalog's constantly changing, you know, you, again, you might want to just get it to a point where I'm taking them to a category page where I know this item's going to be in this category. So if they get to a point where it's like it's going to be this one, then we just we don't it doesn't go down to the individual level. But if you've got that information, you can't always take it all the way down there. I see. I see. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. I think it makes sense uh, to take things by stages. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Great you. question. Anybody else? I'm just looking to see. Well, I think um, if that wrap, oh yeah, please. I just wanted to say one thing, you know, I think we, we kind of jumped in about conversion, but I think to the, to the point of all these tools and all these things we're talking about, if you're spending time and money on getting people to your site, you also need to be thinking about the conversion rate because it's people plus the, how many of them end up ordering that ends up being how much revenue you get. So that's the case for it is if you are investing in getting people to your site, it's really important that you're spending the time and investment to make sure that they have the right experience when they're there. Whether it's the chat bot or the messaging that they get or just generally the workflow across the, the store. Yeah, I would, I would echo AJ, that's a, that's a great point to make. You know, instead of increasing ad spend to get more conversions, really focus on the on-site experience, the touch points, the funnels that you're building, the messaging that you have on site. And, you know, to Brian's point, anticipating 
you know, questions that will, you know, a merchant would have or a visitor would have and have that ready for them so they don't get frustrated and never come back to your site ever again. It, that's how you maximize your return on that investment on all your marketing efforts. Um, AJ, while you're here, um, since we have a few minutes, how about a special treat? You said there are a lot of tools people use that don't necessarily help them convert more. Do you want to talk about a couple? Generically, we don't want rather, to crash Rather than brands. naming names, yeah, I'm not going to name names. Um, you know, one of the things we see when we start working with a new store is that they go, hey, we've got all these, you know, apps installed or all these add-ons added to our store and it hurts page speed. And so we ask, it can, right? And so our question is, is it worth the trade-off in page speed for the customer experience? Are you getting a better customer experience? Are, you, are they getting their questions answered? Are they able to move through the site more naturally? So uh, I'll, I'll share an example where we, we had a client, they got sold an app, a sell, um, an app on Shopify, which had a pretty hefty price tag. And they were showing all these conversion increases, like 30% increases, 50% increases, all these case studies. And we said, well, let's just make sure at least you're getting enough revenue to cover the costs of the tool. So we split test the tool being on for 50% of traffic, off for 50% of traffic, and it did not cover the cost of the tool. Hmm. And we told the tool company this, like, hey, this might be an interesting data point. Your tool may work better for other audiences than this. And they never responded. They were very uninterested in knowing the facts on the ground of how effective their tool is. Yeah, uh, one, of, one of the ones that I've never seen legitimate data on that, that's quite popular, especially with new stores, is the little thing that slides out from the right that says so-and-so and Timbuktu just bought this. And, and um, you know, I saw it recently on a store that a lot, number one, a lot of those, especially the lower priced ones, it's all fake data. So it's, you know, um, the other issue is that where it is real data on some of them, in this particular case, it was saying, well, you know, so-and-so bought this nine days ago, somebody bought this 22 days ago. And, you know, my first comment to the owner was, I don't think this is inspiring my confidence if you haven't made a sale in 10 days. So, you know. Yeah. Um, We've done a lot know, of testing on that, Lori, and it's, it's like less than half the time when we test it, it actually helps conversion. And it could be that, it could be the data. It could also be that it's a little distracting to have this thing popping up while you're trying to pick out which item makes sense for you. So sometimes we just need to adjust the settings or adjust what content's going through. And sometimes like the tool itself isn't helping the customer journey. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's good to know it helps some people, <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, that's, that's a classic one where, I mean, I, I mean, if you've ever hit a site that has 14 pop-ups, you know, that, that attack you, you've got the rewards program over here and the chat over here and, and the email pop-up and the sale pop-up and then the, the little slider and then the Google uh, reviews and it's like, ah, you know, so yeah. To yes and that, Lori, I think that the, um, the best thing you can do for your site, the best thing you can do today for your site is go on the mobile version of your store and go through all the steps right now and make sure you can always see the button that takes you to the next step. It's almost that's, every new client we have, there's some popover somewhere that's blocking the add to cart button. And you're like, oh no, this is the biggest win possible. <laughs> <laughs> AJ, that's a great call out. People do not test the mobile experience as frequently as they should be doing it. Um, that's a great takeaway, AJ. Test your mobile. Maybe start yeah. testing with mobile before you do desktop. Yeah. Yeah, that's and actually I, how and I wanna... disqualify developers, by the way. I, the first thing I do is look at their portfolio on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great strategy. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and I think that speaks to the flexibility that you need and the tools you choose, right? Because some tools will only let you have it be in a particular place. So then you have to redesign your site to fit the tool. Whereas like a tool like Just Uno that will let you code a lot of the adjustments to it um, will give means you don't have to overhaul things to use it and get the benefits. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I, I have one short question if you guys don't mind. I'm just wondering because we, we often talked about um, conversion rates and um, is there like a general rule of thumbs, like roughly how much percent that 
you know, a normal stall will be hitting, a better stall will be hitting, and that kind of a range. I can jump in. The answer is it, it really depends. Um, it's going it, to, I like to segment traffic based on where it's coming from. Um, we could probably spend a long time talking about this, but if you're getting really high intent traffic, we want to see a higher conversion rate. And if they're kind of top of funnel, just learning about your brand, we expect it to be lower. Um, but I've never met a site that I can't make better where the conversion can't go up and you want to just keep an eye on it and really split trap, split the differences, like understand, is it really this element or is it just some time sensitive thing like guesswork of it was on and then it was off. So. Uh, Robin, was that question like, what's a good barometer for overall site conversion online? Was that the question or was it more specific? Uh, yeah, that, 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 that too. Uh, just interested to find out, you know, why it's a general, gotcha. you know, a proper conversion yeah. rate. Yeah. I mean, it's going to vary by vertical, right? And by your average order value. Uh, you know, those are going to be your, your major variables there. I would say a good rule of thumb, or at least what I was saying in like 2013, 2014, a great converting website is about 2% today because of all these tools that are available to you that can help uh, with that messaging and help with those conversions. I'd say that's probably closer to 5% these days. I, don't, I could be off, but I would say that more you know, direct to consumer, B2B, or yeah, B2C merchants are about 5% these days. I see. Thanks for the info, Scott. Yeah, and AJ yeah. as well. Thank you very much. Anybody else have any more questions before we wrap it up for today? We are going to repost this uh, on YouTube within the next day or two. And, and uh, so you can certainly come in and add to the conversation there. We do have the Austin Retail and E-Commerce Meetup Group on Facebook that you're welcome to join and, and, and also share in the conversation. So, uh, and uh, guys, you wanna post your emails in case somebody wants to reach out to you directly? Thanks for everybody's great questions. I dropped my email in and really appreciate uh, Brian and Scott, you guys, it was great being on the panel with you guys. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was good to, good to meet you guys. Yeah, I feel like I hogged all the time. So my apologies, Brian. <laughs> but we appreciate your business and we appreciate your partnership. So thanks everyone. Yeah. All right, um, grab those emails. Um, we'll also send that out in the meetup follow-up email since since the chat doesn't end up on the video recording all right everybody thank you for coming uh take me take care of yourself stay well stay healthy be prosperous go yeah. forth and be pro and prosper all right yeah can't <laughs> <laughs> thanks everyone all right thank take you care. Bye, bye bye everybody have a good one